Episode 20, pretend family. Yeah, what does that mean? It's so, it's so beautiful. It just looks so great. It's so satisfying. And he's exhausted, of course. We really forged bonds last episode. Really colorful bonds. With his broken sword. Unbelievable. I mean, there's a clear emotional link, right? The guy was bringing up themes of family, threatening family. Yeah, he's gotta be like near death, probably. But he's still going. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. He just can't turn it off. No obstacles. But Inosuke is fine for the moment. Wait, why isn't he dead? What? Are you kidding me? It did. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> no, that... No, it was so great. Maybe we can be saved by other bonds. There's other people in this forest. Tanjiro's is unreal. Yeah, it's not gonna be Tanjiro, right? It's not gonna be Tanjiro that ends up doing this. Or is it? That would be unbelievable. Well, that sounds pleasant. I mean, I'm not. Oh my god. This has got nothing left. <gasps> there he is. So you ended up saving the day anyway. We didn't even defeat a member of the Blood Moons. Even at our best. Even with the power of Father's Flame. This is gonna be an interesting matchup. But I feel like it won't take that long. It's a lot of threads. Whoa. <laughs> Looking like a summon over here. Oh. There's an 11th form? Yeah. I thought 10th was the final one. Sky's the limit all of a sudden. Didn't even need to swing. I think we see where this fight is going. Don't walk away. Make sure this time he might be doing that with threads. This poor girl. Did he rescue her? It's not just any kid demon. So there's no actual relation. He's looking for subservience. Bizarre. I mean, maybe it hard is like a deep loneliness to try to give the guy some credit. Loneliness and not knowing how to come unlonely. Never leave me. And I'll make sure that by any means. Nothing is worse than this loneliness. It's a bigger family than I thought. Now put on this spider face. We all do it. One of us. One of us. No thanks. He's like a subset of Michael Jackson. There you go. No more fear. In exchange for the illusion of safety, I give you total oppression. Those are the costs. There's something deeper here. I touched on it last episode and also Mob Psycho, but people will make those exchanges, you know? We will exchange parts of ourselves or elements of our lives in which we are free to alleviate fear or despair. The sad truth being that you haven't actually secured real safety. You haven't really secured power. You've just traded one problem for another. Basically, in those situations, the problem has momentarily defeated you to the point where you had to resign something else that was valuable. Basically, this demon girl chose a life of abuse and non-freedom so that she would not have to feel that fear again. And man, is that real. I've been thinking a lot about relationships, specifically the romantic kind, and you see it a lot, and I've experienced it, where it's easy to sacrifice elements of yourself for a relationship because of what the relationship means to you. And often in that case, it's not really all about the other person, although it's possible that love can exist simultaneously. It's just that, that that element of it is probably more like clinging on because that gives something that you feel you can't have otherwise. That person fills some sort of loneliness or pacifies sort of feelings of non-worth or non-value. And so they become a lifeline and you've now given up something really sacred, which is first of all, the pursuit of truth in who you are, even if that means uncovering areas in which you're weak, right? So that you can address them, but also your personality begins to become blended with the other person. Which is not always bad, but a lot of times it is bad. It's bad when it's compromising. It's bad when it's non-authentic, and also when it means sacrificing or suppressing elements of ourselves that we're already pretty good, you know, that we're healthy and strong. And there's a sweetness to it, you know, like it feels good, at least at first, right? You rarely get to level 100 of the abuse right away, it starts out being sweet, and then you just put up with that 1% of abuse or that 1% of sadness, telling yourself it's worth it, and then 
you know, there's an extra degree of sadness and abuse added and you tell yourself that's worth it because it's only one degree higher than we were before, right? The next thing you know, the sadness is really high, but you've been explaining it away the whole way and you have no perspective. It's one, one happy family. One happy pretend family. Mother. <laughs> you chose an interesting person for the part. Right. I mean, it's just huge metaphor for life, honestly. Just like moths in a web. This thinking is going to get you into a lot of trouble. Oh no, this is not going to... And, well... Whoops. Oh no, she led her to him! She get, gets to have points with her overlord. It's all worth it. It's all worth it if I can stay in this life that keeps me safe from the thing I'm most afraid of. At this point, she's all in and... Basically ruins her to change course because of how far she's gone down this path. And that's when Tanjiro showed up. And it only gets worse. Like, the deeper you go into it, the harder it is to get out. And the only way through it is strength. But the farther you go into it, the harder it is to get out of it, the more strength it requires because of how much other things you've compromised that once made you strong. And also because of just the momentum of explaining everything away to yourself as being worth it. It upsets your entire thing. At least she's found something to be happy about. Look who it is. Insight against insects. The moth's revenge. Who's caught in the web now? You need to get out. Get out. Here she is face to face with her biggest fear that Rui didn't protect her from. Where is the softest part of your neck that I may slash? She's not getting out of this. This sweet face is not, it's not it. There it is again, that old chestnut. With no choice. It's just a sequence of choices, starting from a seemingly benign choice that wasn't benign at all. She's <laughs> so kind. Well, I mean polite, not kind. I don't know. Yeah, for statistics purposes. She says with a smile. This is super ter terrifying to hear this sweet voice talking about this kind of torture. So elegant, so graceful. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, well. How is she in battle? I'm, she's got to be amazing, right? <laughs> At least you die in a beautiful butterfly splendor. The insects fight back. She gives you a moment of peace and beauty. And and then this, whatever this is. It's already done, yeah. What did she do? Interesting. No, she did more than you think, yeah. Poison. Oh, she did the antidote, right? That's what she does. She's like a venomous butterfly or something. Venomous moth. It's pretty cool. She's got like a poison tipped sword. We know what kind of Pokemon gym type she'd be. <laughs> the way she like talks to her opponents is bizarre. But great. I would be frantically getting this goop off of my body and my junk. Also been dealt with. Seems like everything's been resolved. He didn't even look. He's so focused on Nezuko. And in this moment, he thinks of his, the death of his siblings. His rage is that deep. Great guy, Rui. I want to be insufferable. Have the most punchable face of all time. Tanjiro defeated him in so many ways. Or actually just one. <laughs> just being better than him and having what he wants so badly. 
At least maybe in his dying moments, he can understand. The demon family is actually surprisingly relatable. Rui, as terrible as he is, I get the loneliness element of it. I get not knowing how to form a family or how to form the relationships you want and therefore relying on manipulation, to put it mildly, as it relates to real life. But more so, I feel for the sister, just because I understand getting to that point and feeling like you have no choice. And I guess something to add to that idea of like, I have no choice, right, is that I'm actually maybe more willing to give credit to that the greater on the problem becomes. But I think maybe... One way of looking at it is that perhaps some of the worst situations where it seems like one has no choice, especially if they relate to things that solely involve oneself and not one's, you know, country or environment or whatever, probably stems from one very small, seemingly harmless bad decision. It's kind of terrifying, right? But like tiny things like that can escalate into massive things because, you know, you make one small compromise, you trade one thing of value for something of desire, and now you're kind of on a path and going one step down that road makes it that much harder to go back and face the darkness and actually do what you need to do, you know, do the work you need to do on it. And that only gets harder and harder as you continue down that road. And also you're simultaneously explaining to yourself why you're going down that road to sort of squash that, this growing anxiety and fear of the thing you've been running away from. That's one of the ways at least you end up in these really toxic and self-destructive situations but it probably all stemmed from something that wasn't that bad you know which is a desire you know a desire for something and an understandable thing of just not knowing how to properly get that or being too afraid to approach the challenge and so leaning into things that are not the real solution and that create massive trade-offs just thinking about it that way i mean it just solidifies the idea of even minor things even minor choices being important doing one's best to not make any compromises along that route even as difficult or maybe even impossible as that sounds you know you just try to do the right thing even in small ways <laughs> Hit me with it, Butterfly Lady. This guy, I mean, he lived. You know, that's impressive. He's like the one person who lived in the grunts. Maybe he's going places, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. Have high ambitions. Grunt. Very interesting resolution to the episode, getting a lot of the demon backstory, but... Interestingly, making it more relatable in a way that I feel is surprisingly human and, and really satisfying to see depicted in this way. Like, I get it. Overall, I think the best arc of the show so far. Terrifying villains, real bonds between the characters being formed, and that just amazing action se sequence that was the last episode. Like and subscribe. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.